Hello and welcome to another episode of the Closure Pills. This is episode number three. Uh, we're going to see a nice function called Juxt in this episode. Um, but before, um, uh, just a quick plug to the book I'm writing is the Closure Standard Library. Um, and the screencast is based on the content of this book. So if you like the content of the screencast, you might enjoy the content of the book as well. If you're interested, that is the Manning website where you can find the book page and my Twitter handle uh, if you want to get in touch. Juxt. Juxt is a higher order function and takes uh, functions as input and returns a generated function as output. This is a visual representation of uh, a simple invocation of Juxt. We are calling Juxt with first, second and last and we are using this generated function to then invoke it on another argument that is on the left, um, the range from 0 to 9. And we can see on uh, the right uh, the output vector the resulting vector that contains three items 0, 1 and 9 corresponding to the invocation of the individual function first, second and last. So the number of um, items in the output vector is the same as the number of input functions. Um, we can see this live. So if we juxt on first, second and last and we use, for example, range 10. We can see that it's returning the three results of invoking first, the second, and last on range 10, on the sequence range 10. So um, how would I use Juxt? Juxt is useful in all, in all those situations where um, I have individual functions, but in some context I want to see them uh, as a single unit and I want to use them, use them as a single unit. Um, one example that comes to mind uh, is uh, neighbors in a grid. So um, this is a, a grid 5x5 five five with x and y coordinates centered uh, in 0, 0 and we have a cell in position 2, 1 and uh, in light grey I'm showing four neighbours of this, of this cell the north, south, west and east or up and down, left and right neighbours and you can see that you can obtain the new coordinates of the neighbours just by looking at the um, input cell and incrementing or decrementing x and y depending on uh, the direction I want to go and we can code this up and for example passing coordinates as a vector and destructuring them and then returning um, to go up I need to decrement the y and returning a vector containing the transformation the new coordinates and similarly we go down by incrementing and we go left by decrementing the x and we leave the y alone and we go right finally in a similar way we increment the x we can check if everything is working as expected on our cell Oops, and we have to zero. Uh, let's try to go down and see where we go, and we can verify that we are uh, searching for the night neighbors going up and down. And now let's say I want to consider uh, the neighbors as a unit, so I have the single functions to uh, like return me the right coordinates, but um, the, ne the next computation I'm going to do is based on the list of the neighbors, so I want to consider them as a list. Um, there are many ways I can obtain this. 
and one is by using Juxt and I could simply list the function in a Juxt invocation and see if it's working and Juxt is returning exactly the what I what I defined as neighbors and since Juxt is returning a function uh, one if I'm thinking to reuse this behavior uh, in the name in this namespace or other namespaces I can just name the function uh, neighbors for example and it is ready to be invoked like if it was a single unit with uh, a name like if it was another function defined somewhere but this is instead um, one kind of composition of other function that Juxt uh, is giving me um, this is not the the only thing that Juxt is useful for there are other idiomatic uses and one of them has to do with um, decorating um, a collection of items for example let's say we have these words this book is awesome um, as a list and we want to decorate this information we want to just add the information regarding the size of the word uh, if we do a simple map we are obtaining the, the, the size of the word but we don't know exactly which word corresponds to which size and we can then use juxt to pass as many of this additional information as we want and close it with identity or we can use a string in this case it's the same thing because it's the identity function for strings and we obtain this list of uh, vectors uh, that contains the information requested but it also maintains the original word so we can now pass this um, downstream to other transformation function and do additional computation or uh, additional processing um, another use of Juxt is uh, quite idiomatic has to do with uh, sorting and grouping so say we want to sort those words and the default sorting will sort them alphabetically as you might expect uh, but say we add the additional constraint that we want to sort them uh, by count first and then alphabetically and we could solve the problem in different ways but Juxt uh, gives us a very concise way of solving this problem uh, by nesting the two sorting uh, sorting constraints together um, in order to do this we use a parent function of sort which is sort by um, because we need to manipulate the transformation function that sort is using so in this case if we pass identity we are basically obtaining the same thing and we want to change identity to contain the way for sort to sort by multiple parameters and if we re replace identity with juxt and our decoration of count and the identity function we obtain the results of sorting by length first and then uh, if the length is the same we are sorting by uh, we are sorting alphabetically how this works um, well you can imagine that um, there is a, an intermediate passage uh, between the, the, the sort by and the final result which is similar to what we did before so we is like decorating the words with their count when we have that we can sort them and when we sort them what sort is doing in this case instead of sorting the word itself and only it's sorting vectors and vectors uh, have a specific comparator logic and the logic says 
um, compare them by size first, but they are all size two, so size would probably is is not counting in this case, and then it's taking element by element, so it will compare um, element the first element of one vector to the first element of the other vector, and if they are the same, is then comparing the second element of the vector with the second element of the other vector, and so on. Um, in this case, this is obtaining the sorting by count first, and then by uh, and, and then alphabetically. So, if we continue on this intermediate step and want to see how it will finish, we'll have to map last to see the same results as this one. Oh, sorry, same result as sort by juxt. Um, so, as you can see, um, this and this one, these two examples, um, using juxt is making things quite concise and uh, is a good way of having nested sorting uh, constraints. It works similarly for group by, and group by is specifically is very useful for uh, maps uh, where you want to group them using one key. For example, let's say we have um, people maps and the map contain postcode and age and you could group by um, postcode and then when given the same postcode for these people you group by you group them, them by age then you would use something very similar to this instead of words you have a list of maps with those keys and instead of sort by you'll have a group by um, we mentioned uh, before that juxt is composing function so one related function to juxt is comp um, if we check the documentation for comp we see that they are quite similar in the surface on the surface um, they also comp uh, takes uh, functions as arguments as is generating another function as output but there is a difference in the way they are composed the comp is uh, taking the um, output of the first function and using it as an input for the following function and then taking that output as an input for the next function and so on. So it's composing them, it's nesting them, it's nesting the results and is returning a single result at the end which is the composition of all the functions nested into each other. Um, juxt has a similar interface but the way this composing function is different is considering them individually and is returning results of those function individually so based on uh, the kind of problem you're solving you might look into juxt or comp and decide which kind of compositions is best for you and use one of them maybe um, to finish um, i just want to uh, show you uh, do a little bit of considerations regarding juxt performances and implementation details. Um, the source might seem intimidating, but if you look carefully, you'll see that is the same pattern repeating multiple times. And for performance reasons, uh, many uh, standard library functions, many core functions, are treated the same way they have a few RETs that are explicit. In this case, we have the first, second, and third with one, two, three functions. Inputs are explicit, and this is making um, the invocation of these functions slightly faster because the generated bytecode contains a specific method with that number of arguments. So there's no like a reflection involved. It's just going straight to that um, invocation with three arguments um, but when there are more than three input functions then we are going to loop uh, the input and conjoin each result into a vector and we are looping until there is input so this tells us that uh, juxt would take a linear time to generate the function because it needs to iterate through the input um, to uh, 
conjoin sorry it will sorry uh, uh, it it is linear uh the, the function that juxt is generating is linear time because it needs to iterate through each function that was passed as input and uh, it needs to produce the output um, despite this not any normal use of juxt uh, would probably should not be considered uh, or it's very unlikely to generate a bottleneck in the application and the reason is that juxt is used normally as a tool to compose a few functions together and if anything those functions are probably more important for performance profiles than not juxt itself so um, you shouldn't really uh, worry about juxt as uh, a performance bottleneck um, still is useful to understand how it works and if you ever have or if you ever decide to have a macro that is generating juxt invocations with thousands of functions um, well either you know what you're doing or you might uh, consider other ways of solving the problem um, I think this is all for this episode and um, I just want to remember that I'm collecting the show notes in a github repo uh, that you can see uh, the link here and I'm also uh, collecting the slides that you see here sometimes they might contain some interesting diagram that is worth uh, reviewing and as well as the show notes that are mainly the REPL sessions that you just saw and uh, I think that's all so um, thank you for listening and I hope I'll see you again next week with another episode of the Closure Bills. Goodbye.